so we've got these two functions, 2x two, two squared minus 6x plus 4, and 4 cosine of 1 fourth pi x, which seems a little intimidating, but it's really not that bad. Now, my suggestion to you, when they draw this and they give you the functions, go ahead and figure out which one is which by looking at the graph, okay? You need to figure out which function is the function on top and which one's the function on bottom because you're going to have to know that, I promise you, okay? Um, so what do y'all think? Which one is which? Which one is the parabola? Which one is 2x squared minus 6x plus 4? The bottom, the bottom one, okay? The bottom one. Because the biggest reason why I know that is because it's positive 2x squared, so it's upward facing. It can't be the top curve. The top curve is downward facing, okay? So this is f of x, and the other one is the cosine function, the g of x. Okay, so r is the region bounded by the graph as shown in the figure. They show us which one is r is r. A, find the area of the region. Okay, well that's easy enough, right? We know how to do that. <clears throat> it is the integral from 0 to what? 2, okay, of the top function g of x, and normally I would tell you to just write g of x, but since you actually have to find the area, you might as well just write it out. Um, and I'm going to write that as pi over 4x. I don't like 1 fourth pi. We're used to pi over 4x. Minus, now be careful with this, it's a multiple um, multiple term expression, so you got a choice. I would probably go ahead and distribute the negative, okay? Go ahead and distribute that negative, or put parentheses around it, but I think it's just easier to go ahead and distribute the negative. Alright? Um, now, this is a very easily uh, integrable, I think is the word, yeah, integrable, uh, function, okay? What is the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. Now, hang on, there's going to be something in front of it. Remember, when there's something inside the function, when we integrate, we multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of pi over 4 is 4 over pi. Uh, let's see here, minus uh, 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared minus 4x. That's just power rule. Bless you. Alright, I didn't do anything stupid, did I? <coughs> you never know. Uh, that's why I'm asking. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. I would always right here, take your derivative. Okay, take a quick second to take the derivative to make sure that you got all the pieces, okay? Um, if we take the derivative of this trig function right here, we'll all have separate terms. Derivative sine of cosine. Derivative of pi over 4x is pi over 4 factorial root 2. Okay, that's the one we started in the Okay, alright, so we're good. <clears throat> now let's plug in power limits. We've got 16 pi sine of when we plug in 2, that's going to end up giving us, what, pi over 2? Pi over 4 times 2 is pi over 2. Minus 2 times 8 over 3 plus 3 times 4 minus 8. And when we plug in 0, let's think about it for a second. Sine of 0 is 0. All the other pieces have x in them, so that's just going to be 0. I'll put minus 0 here on the end just so we know that we did that part, but that's it. All right? What is the sine of pi over 2? Uh, one. 1. So we've got 16 over pi minus 16 thirds plus 12 minus 8, so plus 4. You do not have to get a common denominator with pi, but I would go ahead and combine uh, the two constants. 4 is 12 over 3, so negative 16 plus 12 is negative 4. I would leave the answer right there. Well, they may on the answer to... <clears throat> as long as it's equivalent, okay? As far as I, the way that I understand it, technically, I would go that this answer is acceptable. Once you plug in your limits and you have no more variables, Technically, you can stop. Now, I feel a little uneasy about that, but I have been told that by AP algebra. Okay. Um, I would at least take it to, to this step, but don't take it so far that you screw something up. Okay. Um, like I said, as far as I know, like this, this is acceptable as far as I know. Let's part A. Part B. 
Part B says write, but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated by the horizontal line, Y equals 4. So on your picture, give yourself the visual. Draw in that horizontal line, and we are rotating this region about that line. So you need to draw your outer radius is from that line to the furthest away curve. We're rotating it. We're rotating by the. I mean, are we okay with that, or do I need to explain that? Yeah, okay. 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 Because we want the outer radius. If we're rotating this region around this line, we're going up. Okay. So the outside is going to be the furthest curve. So why is that line right there? No, no, no. no. I could have put it over okay. here. Uh, okay. I just, I just picked that. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm just drawing. I'm just drawing one example in. Oh, that's it. Yes. Yes. I could have. I could have put it over over here or or over here. I was. I'm sorry. I was just trying to. right here is your y value. Uh, this right here is your y value. So how can we uh, calculate the mean for four minus the y value? Okay, four minus the y value. So let me come down here and start setting up my uh, integral. Alright, my integral is from 0 to 2. You can put the pi in front. Okay, you can factor out the pi. Okay, so the outer radius is 4 minus, which function was that? The um, f of x. Okay, 4 minus f of x squared, right? The radius squared, pi r squared, minus, we've got to subtract the inner radius. Well, which the inner radius is the same concept, right? It would be 4 minus. distance from the y value to the line 4, so it's 4 minus g of x squared dx. And that is all we have to do for that part. It just says write, but do not evaluate. That is the integral expression that would give the volume of the curve. Right, right. G of x is just the distance from the x, uh, the x axis to the curve. We want the distance from the curve to the line y equals 4. So it would be 4 minus g of x. That's going to give us that much difference. Okay? Alright, so let's see. Let's see what else we got. Okay, let's look at part C. Part C is similar. This is a cross section problem. Okay, technically that was a cross section problem too. Okay, region R is the base of the solid. For this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x axis is a square. Right, but do not evaluate for a lower slope than the forces on the other side. So it's the same thing as the same thing. Yes. Okay. Well, it, it, it's not the same thing, but it's the, it's the same idea. 
Okay, so we are evaluating from zero to two, right? The area formula for square is the side squared. So the side, how do we find this, the length of the side here? This is a side, huh? No, 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 four is done. Four, four was just with B, okay? This is the region R is our base. So all of our squares are going to have bases in the region R. Okay, you may want to, on the actual exam, you will have more room than this. You may want to kind of just, in general, re-sketch the region for each section so you can get that visual. So these yellow lines that I've drawn in are the bases of our squares. How do we find that length? g of x minus f of x. And save yourself time and effort and write it that way. g of x minus f of x. Don't take time to write in the actual function. Uh, they give you function notation for a reason. I need to double check on that. Well, that's why you're